We'll start the Council Committee agenda. Uh, Jeannie Kilby, you are first up uh, to talk to us about the uh, newest District Labour Council Day of Mourning. On now, there we go. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Your Worship and Mayor and Council, um, good evening or afternoon. You guys obviously know me as Jeannie Kilby, the president of our union here at the City of Surrey. I'm actually uh, not here in that capacity this evening. I'm here as a delegate to the New Westminster and District Labour Council. And each year, the New Westminster and District Labour Council presents to municipal councils within our region to seek their support and recognition of April 28th as the day of mourning for workers killed and injured on the job. And here at Surrey, we have a, a very good recognition. Uh, Mayor and Council participates with us in our day, in, day of mourning at uh, our City of Surrey Operations Centre, so thank you for that. This presentation is designed to be educational and informative. We believe that workplace health and safety is everyone's responsibility. The purpose of the day of mourning is twofold. To remember workers killed and injured on the job and to prevent further injuries. Positive change happens when we all work together and education is the key to the prevention and our unions lead the way. The BC Federation of Labour's Health and Safety Centre has evolved into a centre for excellence for occupational health and safety training and education. The centre's programming is open to everyone, regardless of their current work status, including students. The centre has helped thousands of workers, organisations and companies know their rights and their responsibilities for workplace safety. The impact of work-related injury and death reaches beyond the workplace and into our communities. In 2016, 144 workers died from either work-related injury or illness. These workers coach sports, they coached sports, they volunteered, they got involved and they inspired and our communities lose when we don't put their safety at work first. One third of all of our workplace injuries happen to young workers who are statistically more likely than any other group to be injured on the job. From 2010 to 2014 there were 32,000 young workers injured and 29 work-related deaths in BC with young men aged 15 through 24 twice as likely to get injured on the job. The BC Federation of Labour's Alive After Five campaign is geared towards educating young workers on their rights and the importance of health and safety measures in the workplace. Bringing accountability to workplace health and safety also offers new hope for improvements. May 9th will be the 25th anniversary of the West Stray mine explosion in Nova Scotia. The United Steel Workers Union had begun an organizing campaign to represent the workers prior to that explosion that killed 26 miners. The workers had identified serious concerns on that work site. All that is left today is a park located on the ground covering the shattered mine below. Along with the memorial to the 26 miners, their lights will shine, says the monument, bearing each of their names. The union still maintains connections with the families and the survivors and remains committed to the struggle that they started on behalf of the West Stray miners before the disaster ever happened. The United Steel Workers West Stray campaign led to Bill C-45, which amended the Criminal Code of Canada to assign criminal liability to organizations for acts for acts of their representatives. The West Stray Amendment was passed unanimously in the House of Commons and was proclaimed into law in early 2004, but more than a decade later, that law is still not being enforced. More than 1,000 workers are killed in Canada each year. Investigations by law enforcement do not view workplace fatalities through the lens of criminal liability. Responsibility is passed off to provincial regulators who have no power to lay criminal charges. Criminal charges are dropped or bargained away in exchange for fines that companies still only see as a cost of doing business. Earlier this month, a subsidiary of a large Vancouver-based construction company was fined less than $50,000 for the death of a worker in 2015 on a Kelowna job site. The WCB report found 
high risk and repeated violations caused his death. In 2013, the steelworkers began a campaign called Stop the Killing, Enforce the Law, and they have lobbied to ensure the police, Crown prosecutors and regulators are better educated and trained on the West Stray Amendments and that there is coordination between agencies responding to workplace fatalities. The campaign has made progress. In January of 2016, for the first time, the Westray amendments were used to sentence a manager at Metron Construction for the deaths of four workers in Toronto. In sentencing, the Ontario Superior Court said he needed to impose a significant term to make it clear to others that they have a serious obligation to ensure the safety of their workers. Workplace death and serious injury do not discriminate nor are they random and without cause. On the day of mourning, we, re we reflect on the importance of accountability for the health and safety in our workplaces and the need for education so both, both workers and employers know their rights and responsibilities. By working together, we can ensure all workers are safe on the job. Municipal support in building is a building block of this important work. Everyone here today can help us make a difference. Be safety conscious, support accountability measures and health and safety education in our workplaces and in the schools. And I know uh, on April 28th, I will see most of you at our work shard um, at 7.30 a.m. for our own day of mourning presentation. But if anybody else uh, can't make it to that presentation, they're more than welcome to join in on the New Westminster District Labour Council's presentation at 11 a.m. at West Westminster Pier Park in New Westminster. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Are there any questions? Oh. <laughs> Councilor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you so much, Jeannie. That was a great presentation. I know that this cause is very uh, close to my heart. My own father had a workplace injury when I was about 12, and I can't tell you how upsetting it is to have somebody come to your door with your dad's watch and his, uh, his uh, hard hat to tell you that your dad has been flown off the island to get uh, help. And so it, it cre he was disabled for the rest of his life, and so... It is an important cause and I think that we really need to make sure that we protect our workers. And I know that here at the City of Surrey, we take great pride in making sure that we have a safe work site. So thank you so much for your work. Thank you, Councillor LaFranc. And I, I am very proud of our safety record here at the City of Surrey. And I know that we all work very, very hard to ensure that each and every one of our workers return, return home safely every single night. So thank you. And not seeing anything, um, I think I'd like to add that as a, as a person who sat on a joint occupational health and safety committee for over 20 years with the city of Surrey, I think it's the, the best thing that comes out of this is that both sides work on the same side, and that's the side that sends everybody home safe at the end of the day. So I applaud you for your, uh, for your efforts that you, that you bring forward and look forward to seeing you guys on Friday morning. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, move adjournment.